Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother, Love Ruthie. Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Mother, 1950, Part 54. 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, July 26th, 1950. Dear Mother and Dad, John just talked with his father from Sandusky. His father mentioned in passing that they'd received wedding invitations. He was wondering whether or not there was any reception or not in that there was no reception card enclosed. The fact that your letter said that the invitations had not yet been mailed doesn't jibe with John's conversation with his father. I certainly think they of all people should have a reception invitation. Please take action on this immediately. Possibly Daddy could write a note of explanation and enclose a reception card. Reception immediately following the ceremony, 1251 Argyle Street. I'd suggested that you enclose reception cards in all of the invitations, just to be on the safe side. John has no idea of who might decide to go. I'll tell you Sunday about hotel reservations. Both John's brother and sister will be coming anyway, as well as his mother and dad. I'd also suggest that you get more invitations printed, for these few of mine, if it's not too inconvenient, and have them printed plain, no embossing, as I mentioned. It's the correct thing. Some of my list may duplicate yours, so watch it. I have an exam tomorrow and, and one on Friday, and then finished. I got 95 and 97 on my midterms, and then on the one Friday that I didn't think I did so well on, I got 89. I got an A and a B for the assignments I did over the weekend. I got a note from Auntie Elsie yesterday. She'd arrived Saturday. I'd phoned several hotels, but not the right one. We did see her last night and took her for a drive. She flew back to St. Thomas this morning and then back west. I hope she can get down to the wedding. It was so nice to see her, and John liked her. I feel sick that the cake has not been made. Why don't you go ahead and have one made? Aren't they supposed to be made ahead of time, or are they not? Don't. Don't have it made yet if it's not to be. John feels that possibly I shouldn't have gone to summer school, but gone home and made all the arrangements. It's so hard, so far away. My face is coming along remarkably well. It's even surprising us. Thank Joyce for her letter, and I hope you'll send Ken and Irene an invitation, too. I don't know what's wrong that I haven't heard from Marion at all. Regarding addressing invitations, it is bad form to abbreviate the state, but proper to omit it when the invitations are posted in the same city. The inside envelope should be addressed Mr. and Mrs. with no address. Never write, and family, but write the children's names, Miss Blank, etc., under the parents' names. Maybe you could get an Emily Post from the library so that the rest of the wedding will be okay. Good night. Thanks for helping, but do send a card to the Rays. Love, Ruth. 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio. August 1st, 1950. Dearest Mother, Daddy, and Bud, Oh, it was so good to get your letter yesterday. It sounds like Bud had a wonderful trip. John likes California very much, too, and says he wouldn't mind settling there. Somehow, though, I have a feeling that we'll stay in Cleveland. I certainly feel like I belong here. I can imagine, though, what a sensation it was to Bud to find out how different another part of America can be. I'm looking forward to seeing him and hearing all about his trip. It was so sweet of Marnie to offer to help you plan. I am so glad because anxious as I am to get home, 
I really don't know too much about planning it all, and I'm sure she does. It gave me a sense of relief, too, to hear the cake will be ready, too. Now I've just got to face it, though, and get a wedding dress. We went to Sandusky Sunday and were simply overwhelmed. Mrs. Ray had practically a whole trousseau as far as household things go. Some, three sheets, towels, and beautiful linen tablecloth and napkins with a monogrammed R. Everyone has been teasing me. I told John, I want everything with an S on it. Just a little excited, I guess. They were his grandmother's things and enough to get us started. Their neighbors gave us a beautiful lamp with green trim, and Dick gave us a lovely modern sandwich tray on a revolving base with modern dishes fitted into it. It's the latest thing out, real Californish looking. Carol is going to give, get us some cooking utensils, and John's relatives are going to give us a vacuum cleaner. One of his uncles gave us, gave us a check for $25. We told them to send things here for, much as I'd like you to see them, I'd hate to have to pay duty too. Then too, maybe you'll come next year and see. John's mom and dad came in to see our bungalow last night and seemed to like it. His mother thinks I should buy a long white dress and the bridesmaid's dresses to go with it here and maybe Connie and Marion will reimburse me when I come home. I hope that'll be okay. Mrs. Ray seems to think they should all go together. I've asked Carol to be my other bridesmaid. I hope you don't think that will be too many, two bridesmaids and a maid of honor. Carol is coming in to help me shop for a dress and bridesmaid's dresses. We thought pale blue for them would be pretty. Carol will buy her own. It'll be good to have someone's advice. I've felt like a lost chick in a department store. We have all our reservations, plane, boat, Banff and Lake Louise. Seventeen dollars a night is high. John wants me to fly home even if it costs more. I went to the dentist yesterday and back Thursday. I'm getting a new plastic put in my front teeth instead of gold. Now I have to go to get my border crossing card, glasses, frames, and look at furniture and blood tests. Will you reserve a double room for Mr. and Mrs. Ray at the Sask for Friday the 18th and a single room for Carol? They arrive Friday at 6 p.m. and leaving Saturday after midnight. Dick is driving with John and will fly back. Dick and Bud will be ushers, okay? There will be more taking part in the ceremony than in the audience. Will you also make hotel reservations for John and Dick for Wednesday night, the 16th? We won't have room, will we? Ann and Wayne Duff for Thursday night, the 17th, and photographers for immediately after the service. <coughs> I love you. Thanks. Thanks. Love, Ruthie. 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, August 3rd, 1950. Dearest Mother, Daddy, and Bud. Hi, and how is everything going? Every day I've been looking for a letter from either of you or Marion and Connie. I guess it seems simply ages since I've heard from Marion and I don't know whether to go on the assumption that she's to be the matron of honor or not. Well, we've been meeting one crisis at a time, and yesterday I finally decided on the living room furniture. We're having it made by a very highly recommended place, supposedly the best in this part of the country. We decided on a two-piece gold-colored sectional and a huge chair and ottoman for John in a toast shade with gold lyrics thread in it. With the green drapes and rug, I think it'll be very nice. Ann Duff had a few of the girls here Tuesday night and had a trousseau shower. She gave me a lovely slip, and I got some nylon panties 
uh, garment, bag, etc. I'll need more, but it was so nice of them. They also embroidered their names on small hand towels for me. We've had a few more gifts, frying pan and mixing bowls, and I have a bed piled full already. We took John's mother and dad out to see the house Monday, and I took some of the girls out Tuesday, and last night Vince and Mary had us for supper, so we went out to see it again. They're just married, and she cooked a delicious meal. Today Carol came out from Sadusky and went shopping with me, so we took her out to see the house too. Everyone likes it very much. I went to the dentist this morning and had a new plastic put in my front teeth where you had gold. It looks just perfect. Tomorrow we get our wedding bands and Saturday the blood tests. I'm quite pleased about the furniture. Now for the dress. Carol helped me look and seemed to think I should have a train. Most of the gowns do. <coughs> the one she liked best seems so fancy to me. It's a lace top, long sleeves, stand-up collar, and wee buttons back and front, long sheer skirt. The bridesmaids' dresses have satin bodices and sh sheer skirts and are in a pale blue, and the matron of honor in a more medium blue. I don't know whether to get them for Marion and Connie or not. It would be nice to have them all go together, and it would be hard to get them at home. They're $29.95. Emily Post says, I choose them and they pay for them. I think they're very pretty. As for mine, I'll have to keep looking unless I decide on that one. I could have the train cut when I got home to whatever length you think suitable. I finally got my border crossing card and will be home if all goes according to plan on the, on the 5 to 6 o'clock plane from Winnipeg, Thursday the 10th. I'll try to look for a dress for you, dear, but I may not have time. I still have nothing else for myself. Can we shop in Regina? I hope you send an invitation to Auntie Ruth and also Irene and her husband and I believe Elva and Cordy's address is Mr. and Mrs. R.C. Witten, number 4, P.F.R.A. Moose Jaw. So you send them one too, please? I forgot to have you make hotel reservations for Ann and Wayne Duff for Thursday plus Friday and Saturday. John and Dick Wednesday plus Thursday and Friday and John's mother and dad and also Carol for Friday, and whatever arrangement suitable since they leave Saturday night about 2 a.m. They arrive on the Friday plane about 6, so I'll let you decide about the rehearsal dinner. Would 7 or so be too late? Would you please send my check to me airmail? Anne and Wayne didn't get a reception card either. What happened? I love you, Ruthie. 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, August 7, 1950. Dearest Mother, This is just a quick note so you'll know that I expect to be home on the 605 Regina Time plane from Winnipeg Thursday. I'm flying, leaving here early in the morning. I've had such nice letters from Marion, Connie, and Bonnie, and I'm going down to meet Carol to pick out some dresses, we hope. We had some pretty ones picked out last week, but they wouldn't go with my dress. I'm so glad Grandma and Grandpa can come. I had a nice letter from them. I hope the bus trip isn't too hard on them, them and I'm so sorry Ethel and Lloyd and Fred and Emma can't make it. There's not much time and I have a lot to do, so bye for now. I love you. Welcome home, bud. Love, Ruthie. P.S. I wonder if there's some arrangement whereby John and Dick could stay with us. F.R.S. To be continued. Now we have uh, three comments on the original publication. And the first is from John S. Ray, the uh, husband of the author, Ruth Smallshaw Ray. Dear Editor, 
SFMC number 30, Received, Read, and Enjoyed. What a beautiful picture on the cover of Ruth in her wedding gown. She was and is a beautiful woman. Several passages caught my eye. Page 292. Interesting that we received A on our book reports. I do not remember doing that, but glad I was able to... I do not remember doing that, but glad I was able to help. Interesting that my mother thought more of my father after 27 years of marriage than she did when they were married. My parents always seemed to get along very well together. Sounds like Gussie was having trouble deciding whether she agreed you, Ruth would be married in Regina. I'm happy I came to Cleveland. Everything is right. Every day this past six weeks has been some sort of crisis. I can see who will have to put a clamp on the money in this family. Ruth thought John was spending too freely. And do have some plain invitations printed, please. Red took serious exception for some reason to having figures on our wedding invitations. $17 a night at Banff and Lake Louise is high. My, oh, my. After all the discussion about what kind of wedding dress to have, Red certainly came up with a beauty. Very tough to arrange all the wedding details by long distance, particularly when Red had so many other things happening. An extremely capable gal, John S. Ray. Now the second comment is from Tessa Delina, the former secretary of Restless Educational Center in Quezon City, Metro Manila, Philippines. Dear Sir... Greetings to you and your family. Thank you so much for a very wonderful issue. SFMC number 30 proved to be very exciting, what with the much-awaited event of the year. Ruth looked so lovely and elegant in her wedding dress, and her face radiated so much joy, despite her undergoing surgery. As the saying goes, brides appear to look at their very best during their wedding day, and this holds true for Ruth too. Both John and Ruth were quite busy with their wedding preparations, and both were so happy doing it all for the cause of true love, and which will last for 48 years and still counting. I guess marriages such as this one is made in heaven. I'd like to quote the following lines from her letter, dated November 11, 1949. John's very nice, and I'm not so afraid of the idea as I usually have been. As you know, I've always been just sick at the idea of getting married and being unhappy like you were. John knows that and says he's positive he can make me happy. Ruth, Ruth must be very proud of her life now, and I'm quite sure that she has a lot of memories in the past which shaped and molded her into what she is now. She remains to be quite optimistic about what tomorrow might bring her, and presently enjoys every minute of her life in the present. God bless you, Ruth and John. As always, congratulations for doing this wonderful issue. Until your next issue, I remain sincerely yours, Tessa J. Dolina, Quezon City, Philippines. And the last comment is from Ruth Smallshaw Ray herself, the author. Dearest Peter, Alice, and Timothy, So glad that you and Tessa enjoy my story. I wonder if anyone else does. I sent number 18 to Marion, the one to Connie of when she came to Cleveland. The Duffs were here for dinner in our 50th meeting at the co-op and borrowed the ones, too, before they were married. And I haven't heard from anyone. Yes, I'm sure Mother was confused about the wedding plans. She knew about the car accident. After 48 years, I'm still aware every day of my scars as I cover them with makeup, especially the nose. Your dad has always been very good to me. I've asked him to expand on his comments to the editor, what he remembers of the times. Blessings. We love you all. Mother. Ruth S. Ray, Rocky River, Ohio. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Good luck to you with your efforts in family history, if this interests you, finding, preserving, and sharing old letters, diaries, and photographs, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive. 
you might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray, peterjray.com. You also might consider checking out our podcast, Adventures in History, which is available on Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcasts, and Radio Public. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care. Happy New, Happy New Year, and I'll see you next time.